All right, Coach Slack here with another daily reading. Um, you know, today it's going to be from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 5, verses 42 through 48. Um, so let's get right into it. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. All right. So, as always, you know, a lot there. Um, you know, one thing I, I see in the footnotes here, um, that, that uh, you know, actually when I read this this morning on GoArch.org, I thought of this story, and then when I saw it in the uh, footnotes, I was like, wow, I guess that really does correlate to this. Um, so it's a, it's a story I've heard. I've read it, and I've, I've also had it spoken to me about uh, a desert father. Uh, the desert fathers, you know, by the time of, you know, maybe the fourth or so century of uh, Christianity, you know, um, you know, when Constantine had, uh, you know, up until this time in the uh, Eastern Roman Empire, it was, Christianity was illegal. And uh, so there came a time when uh, Constantine finally uh, made it not illegal. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a misnomer there. A lot of people say he made it the religion of the empire, and that's not uh, exactly correct. He just made it not illegal. <clears throat> and then what happened at this point is, you know, up until that point, um, you know, if you were to become a bishop or a priest, it almost, in the first, you know, three or four centuries, it almost meant certain death. Um, you were going to be, it, it, it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. Um, so many uh, martyr saints in those first few centuries, you know, witnesses, confessors of the faith. And, uh, you know, one of the uh, interesting twists to all this is when Christianity became not illegal, um, immediately um, some unworthy men jumped at the opportunity because before, you know, if you believe so much uh, in this faith, that you were willing to die for it, you know, because if you were becoming a bishop, you were going to die from it. Um, you know, and so now that's not illegal, you know, emperors, you're getting wined and dined, you're traveling with the uh, emperor's uh, carriages and things. So it became a position of power, a, a, a position of prestige. And so obviously once that became a factor, um, perhaps some unworthy men, uh, took these positions, you know, the uh, hierarchy of the church. And, um, of course, if they were in it for the wrong reasons, they were corrupting it. And some holy fathers really started to uh, recognize what was going on. And, you know, they, they headed out to the desert. Uh, they became ascetics, uh, hermits out in the desert with just them and God. They, they, they couldn't take all the chaos of the world and even more so uh, in the hierarchy of the church, uh, the things that they saw that they just not, did not agree with. So they headed out to the deserts. And then as a result, um, you know, people started to recognize, you know, like I said in the previous podcast, uh, YouTube video, um, you know, the humble, meek, true loving uh, people out there, you know, we're attracted to them and, and, uh, and their wisdom, you know, the people that have internal peace and stuff that are able to think clearly and be focused on uh, the simple, um, very important things on life. You know, people were attracted to that. So then people started to follow them out to the desert, you know, and that created a whole um, genre of the desert fathers. So anyhow, so let me read the uh, footnotes. In contrast to the Old Testament, <clears throat> Jesus warns us not to resist violence with more violence. This is important. Evil can only be overcome by good, which keeps us free from compromise with the devil and can bring our enemy under the yoke of God's love. A saint of the desert once found his hut being looted of its paltry possessions, and he knelt in the corner praying for the bandits. When they left, the monk realized that they had not taken his walking stick. The monk pursued them for many days. 
until he was able to give them the stick as well. Seeing his humility, the bandits returned everything to him and became converted to Jesus Christ. So that's the story I was saying that I heard, and, uh, you know, just amazing. And I've heard other uh, stories similar to this. Even on Mount Athos, uh, I heard of a father that uh, had come back and had found his things robbed, and he had seen a few items that they had forgotten. And, and so he literally pursued for many days, and I don't know if it was many days, maybe many hours in this case. But uh, And when he found them, he said, hey, you know, you forgot some things. And uh, the same thing happened. Uh, they came back and wanted to know more about this man. And, and once he told it, they converted and became monks themselves. So anyhow, um, you know, this is important, you know, the point of uh, evil can only be overcome by good, you know, uh, that's very important. Um, because freed from hate, sadness, and anger, we are able to receive the greatest virtue, perfect love. The love of enemies is not merely an emotion, but includes decision and action. It is to treat and see our enemies as the closest members of our own family. So, you know, if we're treating our enemies like they're our closest brethren, that's the essence of perfect love. You know, I remember a story, uh, you know, I was on the Holy Mountain and uh, my, my Yoranda sent me down to another monk and I was sitting there uh, for a while waiting and waiting and waiting and he finally come, I seen him coming up the path and he came in and he sat with me and he could speak uh, pretty good English. Um, and so we were able to have a good conversation. And that's why my Yoranda sent me to him, obviously. But, um, you know, he sat down and he says, you know, uh, Mikhail, he says, uh, do you know the message of the cross? And I was like, oh, you know, I hope so, Yoranda. You know, perhaps, you know, why don't waste your time and, you know, uh, you just, you know, please tell me. I, I don't want to guess. Um, he says, you know, the message of the cross is a, is a very important one. He said, you know, we know this to be the cross, right? You know. He said, um, you know, the uh, vertical axes alone is not a cross, and the horizontal axes alone is not a cross. Only together, the horizontal and vertical axes make up the cross. And he said, the vertical axes of the cross represents God's love for man and man's love for God. You know, and that the horizontal axes of the cross represent man's love for all of mankind and only together do we find peace and salvation not separate so love of god and love of all fellow human beings is what symbolizes the cross and is the message of the cross i said oh that's so beautiful it's a, it's a wonderful teaching and he says now now that you know the lesson of the cross do you live it and i was like ah you know i hope so you know he said well do you love your fellow man I said, yeah, I, I really try to. I, I really do. You know, um, you know, I try to love everyone I meet and be kind and stuff. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I do a better job. And he says, okay. He says, um, how about the, uh, the the criminal on TV, who is uh, you know uh, a murderer, uh, you know a thief, a robber. You know, you see him doing heinous crimes on the news or something like that. How how much do you love that man? And I was like, ooh, that's a tough one. You know, and, uh, um, you know. How, how you know how should I love him? He said, "Well, if you understand the message of the cross, you will love even the heinous criminal as much as you love your brother, your son, your wife, your fellow uh, community people that maybe you're closer to." He said, "You have to have the same love for that person because it's also a child of God, and your compassion should even be more so for that person because they're so lost and trapped by evil to be able to do such uh, heinous evil acts." You know, so you know, to, to, to pray for them and have compassion on them and to feel pain for them um, is what his message was. And so that, that was the message of the cross he gave me. And I think that goes along with this gospel and, of course, is pertinent to these times and all times, right? Um, so some more footnotes here. The summary statement of all that has preceded. The Christian can indeed grow in the perfection of the Father, which is shown by imitating his love and his mercy. So obviously, you know, um, you know, even in Jesus's time, um, they needed more love and mercy. And in these times, we need love and mercy. You know, that is the answer. You know, um, we need tons of love, tons of mercy. And I think we can get through any challenges as human beings with these things. So about a 10 minute video today, uh, a little bit shorter, but that's probably good. Maybe more of you will watch it. Um, you know, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.